Good evening everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name is Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and I'm here this evening to start a two-week project um, that we're going to do over the, I say over the next two weeks. That would make sense if it was a two-week project, wouldn't it? Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a project this week and we're going to complete it next week. So we're going to do this week, we're going to do board painting. So we're going to paint a board tonight already for a Halloween themed cake and then next week we're going to finish it by doing the cake itself so this is a two-week project so if you fancy having a go um, you will have time between to follow everything that I've done on the live tonight so you can um, do it with me it's one of those lovely interactive ones she says <laughs> I haven't actually planned it you know what I'm like um, but we're going to give this a go anyway so the idea is we're going to be using um, we've got a board already here which is in front of me which I sugar pasted a little while ago Kelly's just arrived we'll say hello to Kelly hello sorry I'm opening my sandwich so Kelly hasn't had her tea yet so she's now just opening her sandwich let's get that bit over with have you done that it's open okay that's fine no more rustling in the background so we're going to be doing some board painting tonight um so kelly's here on comments um and we will get started shortly um for those of you that follow me on youtube i did put a new video up uh, this morning which is this little chap here so if anybody hasn't seen me doing this I'm just going to put this on the other camera for a second so you can see so I've just done a little YouTube video that shows you how to make this um, Frankenstein's monster you called it didn't you Kelly it's not Frankenstein's Frankenstein's monster so if anybody would like to learn how to make this cookie I have literally just put it up onto YouTube um, let me take that down. So if anybody is looking for my YouTube channel, there it is. Um, so this is a Frankenstein monster cookie. So if anyone would like to have a go at that, then do please pop over to the YouTube channel and have a look. So I've just uploaded it today. It's lots of fun. It's nice and easy to do and it's very effective and not too scary or as scary as you want to make it, depending on exactly what expression you decide to put on his face. Um, but it is there now. If you do want to have a look, um, I put it up there this morning. So there you go added some content I've been very proactive since I come back off my holiday <laughs> so people are mentioning my holiday yes I'm back off my holiday <laughs> I'm still in one piece and I met Maureen so we had a cup of tea <laughs> uh, so yeah very um, interesting I've been over in Northern Ireland it's a fantastic place if anybody would like to go um, to Northern Ireland do please go for a visit because it is a fantastic place actually we've been haven't we we've both been Kelly been we've been many times because my husband is uh, from Northern Ireland so yes uh, we've been lots of times and it's lovely it's a very nice place to visit so um, yes if you have anyone ever gets any chance to go then do go um, Vanessa, the answer to your question is that is a travel cup. It's called the tra what do I call that cookie cutter? Travel cup. Travel cup. Kelly, I'll find your link. Anyway, yes, that's what the Frankenstein cut is made of. But if you go across to the YouTube channel, you will be able to see it all being done. Um, did you try and get the ice cream? <laughs> They're all asking me about the ice cream now. Uh, how many times did you go to the ice cream shop? I only went to the ice cream shop twice. I didn't go... I didn't go more than twice. I wonder. I would have gone more than twice, but I think your dad was getting a bit fed up with me. Um, I couldn't actually find um, an, a Mr. Whippy Man in, in Northern Ireland, but I did manage to find Morelli's, which I have to say is one of the loveliest ice cream shops ever. And if anyone again ever gets to go to Northern Ireland, you have to go to Port Stewart, go to Morelli's. It's absolutely lovely, but I'm now paying the consequences <laughs> and uh, yeah, I want to diet this week. <laughs> No ice cream for me this week. It's a good job the weather's turned actually because um, it's less tempting, isn't it? So um, I won't be doing that. So we're going to be doing some painting um, tonight. So this is part one of a two part project. So this week we're doing the board painting and next week we're going to put the cake together. So the whole theme of this is Halloween, obviously, um, and it's going to be a haunted house theme. What are you doing over there? I need some water. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to be doing a Halloween theme. So a big haunted house on the top, which we were doing chocolate next week with a cake underneath which will be a big hill for it to be on and so tonight we're going to do some spooky painting all around the board so that um, you'll have something to kind of look up to on them on the hill that's the idea anyway <laughs> that's what we're hoping for that's what it looks like so let me show you what I've done let me turn this down there we go so I'm going to pull this back a bit you'll see it's quite a big board there you go it just looks like a never-ending board doesn't it um it is uh, 12 inches I think is or is it bigger actually it looks bigger than that hold on a minute there's my tape measure gone I think that might be a bigger ball than that Kelly oh there we go there's my tape measure right so 
we have got, I've got to be careful because I've only just sugar pasted this, this board, but it's bigger. Right, this is a 14 inch square board, so hence it is rather, that's why I'm moving it up and down. And you'll see there that I've just scored in, um, now what size was that? Was that an eight inch? This is my rough plan for the cake for next week. Yeah, eight inch cake. I'm actually thinking it will come out a little bit further than that because it's going to kind of come down. So um, I put in an eight inch circle there so I know not to do any writing in that, that part. Otherwise, I'm going to have a problem um, and I'll, my cake won't fit my board. So let's push that back up again. So if you can see that line there, you'll know what that is. Let's move that up. And then what I've done here to start myself off um, is I've already put the word spooky on here, which I've used from um, a picture. So I've got myself a picture of the word spooky. Now, if you go online and if you literally go into Google and you just put anything Halloween words wise, you can pick up anything at all, literally anything. Um, and then all I've done is trace it like so. And then I've turned it over done some tracing on the other side and I've put that on and I've marked it onto my sugar paste. Now I have just done this so the sugar paste is quite soft hence why I went through it a little bit there. there's a little hole there. The idea with this is to try and do it when it's actually dry but because I want to now put patchwork cutters on there I've had to do it um, while the sugar paste is soft. So I have got here tonight the Halloween set which is patchwork cutters. Now there's all sorts in this kit, I'm going to move this down a second. So there's a witch obviously, um, there's a little cauldron, there's two different size pumpkins, so there's lots there, a couple of bats, let me put these down, a couple of bats there. Um, there is actually a couple of ghosts, um, why are these ghosts Kelly? I don't really know what yeah. these are, did you say these are ghosts? Okay these are ghosts. I don't know why, but I just feel like I want to cut their sort of legs off at the bottom so they look like they're floating. No, no you don't want me to. Well, I'm not going to use them anyway on this one. I've got other plans. Um, so these are the ghosts. There is a cat, so we have to use the cat. Um, some little stars here as well. So there's loads in this kit, absolutely loads. And then the little moon as well. So there's lots and lots of different things in there. Now, some I've actually cut the witch out already. Now, if anybody cuts anything out with patchwork cutters, please use modelling paste. Please use something like Saracena and roll it really, really thin because otherwise it's going to be a total nightmare for you because you will never do this in sugar paste. You can emboss onto sugar paste, but cutting this out, you need to do it with, um, a modelling paste okay really important otherwise you'll be picking bits out of it and it will drive you crazy so I've already put my writing on there the other thing I would suggest if you wanted to do um, the writing um, with this you don't have to do what I do and scribe something on there's lots of these um What's that? Um, no, sweet stamps. They've got various sort of Harry Potter looking things at the moment that look quite spooky. So if you manage to get a set of those and you could stamp some words on, you could do that as well. So just kind of some different ideas there, but you could kind of do anything like that. So I'm not going to put my witch on the board. I've already cut her out. So I'm going to bring her in, show you what I've done with her. So I've cut my witch out earlier today. So she is on the modelling paste. She is lovely. She's got a really nice face, actually. Obviously, you'll see it a little bit better once we start painting her green and purple and all sorts of crazy colours. So that's the witch on there. Now, I've done her as a, a cutout because I want to use her on my um, haunted house next week. So I don't want her on my board. I want her flying. So that's why I've done her in modelling paste. One, because it's patchwork and I want to cut her out. But secondly, it will dry. So at the moment, you can see it's still sort of quite soft, but it will eventually dry and then we will be able to um, attach her to my haunted house. Now, I've cut a moon out, um, which is just a circle, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use that yet. It ultimately depends on how easy it is to stick everything together. But we've got that as a backup for next week if we need it. And then I've cut one little pumpkin out as well, which I'm going to use to put against the door of the haunted house. You like that idea, Kelly? Yes, mm -hmm. good. So um, we've got three cut out. So those two from the patchwork um, set and then the rest of it we're going to emboss actually directly on here so we've got a fair amount to do um, am I going to be finished before the bake-off starts I don't know however you can always come back and watch these or you can go watch the bake-off on plus one so I don't know um, we'll just 
tick away and see how we get on. We certainly wouldn't be able to do the whole lot in one go tonight because otherwise we'd be here till about well, midnight, I think. So I think you'll be fed up with me by then. So we're going to do this in two halves. We'll do the painting tonight and we'll do the cake next week. So if anybody wants to do it and you want to join in, um, all you need to do is just follow the video over the weekend and then you'll have your board all ready. OK, fingers crossed. Right, let's go back to this again. OK, so we're going to emboss the rest of this now. So I've done this sugar paste literally about 15 minutes ago. Um, so what we're going to do, let's have a little look what we've got. So we've got a cauldron so we can kind of spread things out. So before you kind of commit to what you're going to do, let's put things around. Uh, this is a bit where Kelly normally jumps up and comes over and puts things in different places, don't you? <laughs> There's a little bat there, so we could put some, something like that maybe. How does that look? That doesn't look too bad, does it? So we could put, let's put that one there maybe. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks okay, doesn't it? Which is cauldron there. Bats, you can obviously use the bats more if you want to. With the little stars, you can actually cut little stars out and you could add those around the board if you want to. I kind of want most of the focus here. Um, there doesn't seem a lot of point in doing too much over here um, because the witch is going to be flying this way, as is the house is going to be facing this way. So I could do a little bit more up here, maybe a couple of extra bats, but I think we'll just generally stick with this layout. So all you're going to do once you've decided and committed where you want it to be, I'm just going to move my cat a little bit. Got to get the cat right. There we go. And just press down. Just do it gently. Don't press too hard. And then once you've pressed it down, there we are. Perfect. You can always take your finger and just rub it over the top. Then what that does, it brings the sugar paste back up again so that you don't have too many sort of grooves. Now, no, I've done this in grey tonight. Now, the reason I've done it in grey is obviously I want a black cat. So if I do a black board, I'm going to not be able to see my cat. So that's why I've done a grey board. So if anybody's thinking why she done that and then we'll press this pumpkin down. So we kind of want the markings, but we don't want it too deep. So let's bring that up, see what we've got. Yep, that's fine. So again, we'll just rub our finger over that just to bring it back up. You'll feel it come back up when you do this. It's quite, you know, easy to pick up. Let's do one bat there. So we'll press that down. Now they should be fairly straightforward and quite sort of quick to paint. I'm not expecting them to be particularly difficult. Again, just bring it back up again. That's we'll put another bat. Should we do another one? Let's do another one flying that way as well. Oh, then I'm going to start thinking we need to do things in threes. I know what my thinking is now. OK, we'll do another one there. We'll have a look at it in a minute, see what we think. There we go. Like that. And then this side. So we'll move those out of the way for the moment. This side we'll do this one here. So we'll do the little pumpkin and the big one. Might as well while we're here. Again, just rub over there like so. That will help you because sometimes your paintbrush ends up going into all these grooves and disappearing and then it becomes a bit more of a problem. Right, let's press this down. So this is a cauldron with a, uh, flames at the bottom. We should have done Hocus Pocus, Kelly. I was literally just thinking that this is <laughs> Hocus Pocus thing, Kate. What uh... did you cut the board in? It's sugar paste. It's just sugar paste, which I did literally just before I went live because I thought there's no point in you watching me do some sugar paste in. There's no point doing that. So, oops, my bat flew You've then. Done but, a hocus pocus cake. I know I've done a hocus pocus cake. Birthday, I have done a hocus pocus cake, and I've had full witch approval, haven't I? Yeah. Um, from what was the name of the Mary Sanderson? Mary Sanderson. So if anybody watches Hocus Pocus, Kelly when she turned seventeen. Is mad on hocus pocus. In fact, we have well, to. I still am. I know we have to watch it all year round. Anyway, I did do a hocus pocus cake. I did. I had a great time doing that actually, and I put it on um, Instagram and I tagged in the three witches and I actually got witch approval. I tell you what, that made my day. That did the actress who played Mary liked my post. Oh, that was so fun. Right, we'll put one more bat up there just to kind of help with the balance here. Put one more there. OK, right. So again, we'll just bring that back up there so we don't end up with sort of grooves everywhere. OK, how about that? That's not a bad layout, I don't think. So we can always add to it. It's not like, you know, you've done it and then you don't really know what to do. It's, you can always go back and do more. So but we'll leave it like that for the moment um, and we'll get our cocoa butter set up. So I'm just going to move this so I can show you the setup. There we go. So no one's confused. And then this is going to go off screen because you won't be able to have both on screen at the same time. Let's put that 
over there. That's fine. So here we go. This is a chrome food warmer. Now, um, Carol and I do not sell these. Um, you can get them on Amazon. So if you just put in chrome food warmer and um, you will find they are basically, um, it's got a candle in the middle, a tea light. So you obviously have to replace that. So you just light your candle and then we pop on top of it a metal paint palette now this gets really hot and we need it to get hot because we need it to melt this product here which is cocoa butter and that's what we're going to be using for painting so we're literally going to just pop some of these on there like that and you'll see them melt really quickly before your eyes they don't take very long to melt and you don't need very many so i'm just literally got i'll just split that up a little bit um I put, usually put them on two sides just to kind of keep my colours apart more than anything else. So we get white on one side and black on the other. So I'm going to put the white there. So these are dusting colours. There we go. So this one is just white and then we've got black. Now I'll put that on the opposite side because I don't want that to go particularly into the white straight away. You'll hardly use anything. These go on and on and on. So you won't have any problems with that at all. Now I did pick this lurid green colour for my witch, which Kelly will be delighted about. So I've picked um, a bright spring green colour. So let's put that in there. Now I'm going to incorporate um, a couple of the wonder dusts. We'll come to those in a minute. Um, sunset orange for my pumpkins. So we'll pop that in there. There we go. Oh, a bit too much. Never mind. So, and then brown for my logs at the bottom of the cauldron. So I don't need much there, just a little bit there. The minute I say I need a little bit, the whole lot falls out. And then a tiny bit of red, just to do a bit of shading around the flames. Again, don't need very much. And then I'm going to use um, this one, which is regal purple. Is that our favourite one, Kelly? So it's the one we like. Shiny yeah, it's the shiny purple one. This is the one we like. Um, we're going to use Wonder Dust Regal Purple, um, which we're going to use for the witch. Oh, what she's going to be wearing purple, and some black as well. I think we'll go for a we'll go for a look, shall we, Kelly? Mm -hmm. So that's it all set up, and you can see in the time that I've done that, you've already got these starting to melt, so that they're going to be ready to use shortly. And once we keep the heat on here, this will remain melted all the time. So if anybody's thinking about doing this, then this is cocoa butter and dusting colours. That's exactly what I'm using here. Okay, so we're not using gels, we're not using pastes. Yes, you can use luster colours. Yes, you can use matte colours. Um, any of those is absolutely fine, but what you don't want to be using is things like this. Okay, just get rid of those. There's no, you don't want that. Um, you don't want anything like that because um, it doesn't work. Now, um, if you don't know already, I have a teaching school and I teach cake painting online. And so I have a set of brushes which I use to help people learn or follow what I'm doing and they have numbers on them um, so I tend to sort of start shouting out numbers when I start painting so if you hear me shouting out numbers you'll know what it is I'm doing I'm following the numbers that are on my brushes I seem to have picked up a, a huge variety of number threes and ones Kelly tonight I don't know what I've done um, but anyway that's what I've got so um, we're going to use those brushes as well um, you just need then a little bit of kitchen roll and you're ready to go it's that simple so you really don't need that much stuff um, it's as straightforward as that should we start with the witch we're going to start with the witch because she's right next to me. The only thing I was going to put in... Can you pass me that green board? Is that clean, that one over there? No, I'll use this one then. That one under there, that tray. Under the tray. Yeah. No? Okay, let's pass this one. It's just very shiny. Let's see if we can... Why don't you use the pink one? It's quite big. Oh, where is it? No, because I've got that for um something else later on. I don't want to use that pink board when I've got... Um, cocoa butter flames around otherwise I'll panic and I'll end up burning the board and then I'll never be forgiven <laughs> this, this, I can't use the pink board when I'm painting because I worry that I'm going to end up doing something to it so right they love their pink you can eat the chocolate butter you can eat the chocolate lolly if you want to Thank yes you. right okay so let's start with the witch right, let's turn this round there we go. I just thought I might put her on here. You might see her a bit better. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? And we'll pop that there and our little pumpkin. So we're going to do her first. Now what I might do, I'm just going to put me back on screen for a second. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit further so you can see as close as we can get it. Otherwise, 
feel like you're miles away, let's have a look, see what we've got. Uh, because our exposure is just paint white and black tights. Well, I was going to do red and white tights. Is that like, what? No, purple and black tights. You're frowning at me. Don't frown at me. <laughs> right, there you go. Hopefully you can see her now. She's nice and clear. Right, so what I might do... No, I was going to put her on a thing, but I won't. So I'm going to use paintbrush number one. So if you hear me talking about paintbrushes, you know what I'm talking about. Let's turn her green. Oh, I'm desperate to turn her green. Let's do that first. So I'm going to use the spring green colour. And we're just going to literally mix the cocoa butter and the dusting colour together. Now, how lurid green do we want this to be? Let's have a little look and see what we've got. Do we want her to be mega green or a little bit lighter? Maybe a little bit lighter. So there she is. So... I'm going to make her green. She's been starring in Wicked. <laughs> I'm going to try and turn around so you can, my hand's not in the way. And there we go. So we'll make her green to start with. So let's get her painted up because then we can come back to the board. Once we're on the board, then we'll be staying on the board. Okay, I think that's... And then we've got her hands. Don't forget her hands. I think that's a little bit of hair actually there. So we'll have to come back and do that. There we go, lovely, and there we go, so she's got a hand there, so that's green, so let's get that in there. Is there any more showing? I don't think there is actually, I think that's it. Is there a let's shop on Saturday? I am on Saturday live, yes, yes. I am. And then we're going to do a now. So I've done that bit. Let's do some brown on the broom itself. So what we'll do is we'll take some brown, add some white to it. I've added a bit too much. And then we'll do the handle here. Put it in there like that. So the witch is only going to be facing forward. So I'm not going to bother to paint behind this. That seems a bit silly to me. Um, so we'll just do one side, but I want to make sure I've got down the sides there, otherwise it gets a little bit um, silly. Let's turn that round a bit. It's very hot under these lights. Okay, and then we'll do that there. What's Marion got on that bit there? Let me have a look. Yeah, that is part of the brim. There we go. I'm going to make sure I've not missed anything there. Then you can always make it a little bit darker if you want. So let's go back and we'll just do perhaps like neat brown for this bit here. So there you go. You can see the difference. So this is brown with white added to it. And then all I've done at the bottom here is just go for neat brown. And you can see how much darker it is. It's much, um, much darker than before. The other colour. There we go. And what time was that again? Ten. Ten? Yeah. Right, okay, so there we've got that on there like that. Okay, so hopefully if anybody's got these, they're going to start getting them all ready and having a go at doing this project. See if you like the idea of it, something a bit 3D. So she's going to be drying over the week, so because she's on... Modelling paste, it'll take a little while to dry. There we go. And then what we'll do is we'll perhaps do that bit. We'll put a bit of black in it now, maybe. And then we'll just make that another colour as well. Okay, so we've got that there. She's obviously been somewhere posh to get her brim, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. There we go. Okay. Just make sure you get that bit behind it so that when you put it up onto the castle, when we get that far, or not the castle, the haunted house. I've got castles on the brain at the moment. There we go. I think what we'll do as well, we'll just take a bit more black and we'll just, you've got some grooves in here. So you can always just kind of take that down into the brim as well. A little bit there as well. So to use what, what there is marked out, you might as well. There you go. So we've done that there, like so. Now... Which hair colour, Kelly? What would you like? Black. You want black, okay. 
So we'll go full black. There we go. Right, so we're going to go for her. Her hair's going to be black into here. So what we'll do is we'll make her, her um, witch's outfit. Well, we were going to do it a little bit purple, we'll do some purple. The reason I don't want to do it all purple is because I want to do the roof of the castle, uh, roof of the castle, roof of the haunted house um, purple. So I don't want to end up with um, a clash. I don't want her blending with her house. <laughs> She's got to look like she lives there, not, not trying to match it. She'd be on changing rooms otherwise, wouldn't she? There we go. That's all right, don't have to overthink that particularly. We can just kind of get our paint in there. Need a bit more though, because I'm running out. If you find it starts to get um, quite sort of um, thin, you know, you're not getting decent coverage, then just up the cocoa butter um, and then you should end up with um, a thicker paint. That sometimes happens. So when you mix it together, just put a bit more dusting colour in there. There we go. She looks quite sweet, I think, for a witch anyway. Now, she has got um, features. If you are sort of feeling quite daring and you want to go in there and try and sort that out, um, you're going to need a really small brush. Now, I've got a zero zero somewhere, but I can't remember what I've done with it now. I had it in my hand a minute ago. There it is. Is that it? Yeah. This one here is a really, really tiny brush. That will definitely help. She needs a wart. Is that what Nikki's just put? <laughs> we, can, that bit, yeah. we can give her a wart if you want a wart. <laughs> oh, yeah, <see>. Why <laughs> not? A little brown one. little brown wart. Okay, we'll give her a wart just for you. See, this is the nice thing is you can adapt these, you know. So let's give her a wart on her nose. Let me go a little bit of brown there. How about that? Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. Is that an acceptable wart? <laughs> um, but yeah, you can do her features there if you want to. Um, it's entirely up to you. Let me have a little look at it on here. Yeah, you could. Job, I'm job is. I'm worried about if I do her eye, she's going to end up looking like she's got a black eye. So I'm just going to be very careful here and just put a little bit of colour on here. I did have a bit of an instant painting an eye online once, didn't I, Kelly? And it got to the point where I was laughing so much because it had gone so wrong. <laughs> and I just couldn't cope with it. It was so funny. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll just do a little sort of hint of an eye there. There we go. I'm happy with that. Right. OK, so let's think about her. What did you want to do with her? Her boots are going to be black, aren't they? It's all going to be black, I think, with the exception of her hat. I was going to put a stripe of... Um, uh, a stripe of that purple in there so she could match her house Kelly mm -hmm. yeah so because she's a witch she should be fairly straightforward and that there is a stripe running across there so if I turn that round so you can see it so I'm going to just paint her black here so I'm sure probably someone's thinking well why didn't you just cut it out in black in the first place well I could have done but then I can't get to paint her face green and I can't do other things so it's, to be honest it's just as easy just do it in white and then paint it it's really not that difficult um, nice and straightforward why did, you do her brown? why did I do it brown? It looks, no it looks black no it is brown could you light it oh now I've done that wrong she put me off well I'm just saying because it looks like a weird eye okay well I'll try and have an, another go in a minute but it's wet at the minute so I'll have to come back to it so but I've just painted the wrong bit now I was chattering I'm gonna leave that band there for a minute because I wanted to do that purple so we'll leave that for a second and let that dry so if you make a mistake like I've just done you can just leave it dry and then paint over it and that should be fine just that little bit there you can always kind of encourage it to go as well so I can just take a dry brush and just lift up some of the paint it won't take it all up but it will take a little bit up but I'm going to come back and paint over that so that will be fine let's turn it round and then we will do the rest of her clothes so it's all marked out now what I can do what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change this so it goes to a darker grey because I want to be able to do some shading that I can't do if it's just neat black. So I'm now changing this to dark grey. So you'll see a difference um, between the hat and the clothes. Hopefully my hand's not in too much of a way. Okay. So put that down there. 
So because the marks are on um, the markings are on the patchwork cutter, you don't need to worry about sort of where the sleeves and all that are. It's all done for you, so you can literally just paint away. So, so one says you can make it into a buckle. What this? Oh yeah, good plan. Who's put that? Yeah, let's do that. That gets Kelly out of a hole, doesn't it, Kel? <laughs> I'm not in any. Well, you were chattering, you see, you put me well, off. The mole is darker than her actual eyeball. I know it is. I've got to go back and sort it. You know what happened when I did that eye live on the leprechaun, and I never got over that because I couldn't stop laughing. So I, I'm now really nervous about doing eyes live. <laughs> Again, how you mix the yeah, it will. I'll, when I finish the witch, I'll move it across so you can have a little look. So let me just get through the witch, and then once we switch over to the board, then I'll show you what we're talking about here. Okay, so I'm getting there. So she's dark grey. The hat is black, and then in a minute we're going to go back and do a bit of shading. There's a little gap there. Let's fill that in. Hopefully you can still see, my hand's not in the way too much. I keep move, trying to move it out of the way. Now if it starts to get a bit thin, can you see there it's not giving me the coverage that I want particularly? You can always just increase the amount of um, dusting colour you've got in your mix and then just carry on again. Like that. If you're going to do something like this, you can do it in advance. So if you're going to make a Halloween cake, you can get all of this all done before you... Um, have to do the cake which is what I'm doing so basically I'm preparing for next week so I'm getting everything painted everything ready so that when I come to do my cake it's not going to take me very long to put it together because everything will be pre-made and that will make all the difference it's much nicer to do cake decorating when you're actually prepared than it is to try and sort of rush it all through there we go mum I thought you were doing her tights no I've changed my mind because they're boots, not tights. No, you would be like this. No, it's fine. I've changed my mind. Okay, right. So let's go back to her hat. So what we'll do there? She looks. Why don't you make the rem uh, the the thing on the hat purple? Yeah, I'm going yeah. to. That was the original plan. I'm just going to remove this because I don't like all this mess underneath it because it looks horrible. There we go. That's better. Right there, she is. And we're going to brush if I got here one. So we're going to take this. Right, I'm going to just move this across for a second because I'm in very close. It's a job to show you what's going on here. So I'm going to try and bring this in so you can see what's happening for a second. So in order to mix these colours, let me turn it round. Let me witch there. I'm going to just dip my brush in this cocoa butter, pick up a colour. So I'm picking up purple in this case, and then I'll just mix it like that side by side. So you pick up a colour and your cocoa butter, mix the two together. The more dusting colour that's in there, the thicker the paint. OK, so if you have got um, a very thin paint, you've got too much cocoa butter in there. If you've got a very thick paint, then you've got too much dusting colour. And the only way you'll kind of work it out is by actually doing it. So um, you get a feel for the coverage about how it works. So I'm just going to leave that there like that. Hopefully it's sort of propped up. It's not going to go anywhere. And then we're just going to paint the hat brim there. So you can see the wonder, the wonder dust is coming through now. This is the one called Regal Purple. It is lovely. It's my favourite one. And we're going to use it big time next week. Um, this is the start. Mum, you really said you were making that into a buckle. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. I'm doing that now. So I'm now switching over to paintbrush at zero, zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'll just put a little, I'll just go round it there. And there we go, that's his buckle. You could paint that gold if you wanted to, but we'll just try and keep it in the colours of the witch at the moment. There she goes, she's got a little one there, that's fine. Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit of shading around the witch. I'm going to move her up a bit. I'm going to try to keep this here, but it is quite tricky. I'll turn it around a little bit so we can see what's going on. So in order to clean my brush, I normally just dip it into the cocoa butter and then just wipe it on a piece of kitchen roll. 
that cleans it up pretty well. So just do that literally like that. That's all done. And then we've got some areas that we can either use a bit of Wonder Dust to get some sort of extra colours in, um, or we can darken up the original grey colour. So we can add a bit of black to this colour here. So I'm just grabbing a bit over there. And then we can come in behind areas like this where it would be naturally a little bit darker. Just sort of tap some colour in down there. And then use a brush that's dry and we can just sort of blend that back a little bit so that that gives us a bit of a shadow around her arm. Let's make that a little bit darker still. And then just blend that back like so. And then again, there would be another shadow under here, under her arm. So you can only do this if you did this in dark grey. If you've done this in black, you can't shade it. You've got nowhere to go, all right? And then just pull that down a little bit like that. Let's have a look what it's looking like on your screen. There we go. I'm going to bring a bit more black down here. Around her knees. Now I've clipped that with a little bit of purple actually, but I quite like that. So I think what I will do is take my other brush. I've got a few brushes on the go here. And we'll just get some more of this purple. And we'll just perhaps add a little bit down here as well. So says that's the moonlight shining on the head. On what? The, onto the witch. Onto the witch. This purple colour goes very nicely over the black. Can you see that? So we're just going to add a little bit of purple there. Perhaps she's got a purple underskirt on. I'm not going to fill it in completely. I'm going to just kind of leave it like that. I think that looks quite cool actually. And then if you wanted to do the, some stripier socks or whatever it was we were talking about again just do the purple straight over the black it's much easier than trying to sort of do um, black in between there you go she will coordinate very nicely with her house next week okay and then we'll make her boots a little bit blacker than we've got at the moment so again we'll make that like neat black the witch won't fit onto a cupcake, no, she's too big. I've got a little cupcake guide that I use um, that's floating around somewhere. Where have I put that? There it is. So this is the general size of a cupcake topper, so it's too big. So even her uh, her head, you just about get her head in, but otherwise it's too, um, it's too big. So let's just make her boot a little bit darker. There we go. Like that. How's that looking? Mm. <laughs> right now, if you've got any areas that are still white, if you use um, a smaller brush like the 00, something like that, what did I do with it? There it is. You can kind of just go back because you don't want any white, any white bits. So you can just go back and just fill in anything you can see. Just dot it over like that and then what we'll do is we'll leave her to dry and she'll be ready for next week so you can always go back I think I'll just add a little bit there add little bits here and there but I think the purples come out really well I'm just going to go around these lines here just with a little bit of black just to bring those out a little bit you can make a bit of fuss of her if you want to but the zero zero brush goes quite nicely into that gap so um, that works quite well there we go I think she looks all right apart from her eye although she does have a <laughs> very strong wart on her side there and I've just got a little bit to do down there as well which I can see as soon as you start moving her around you can see little flashes of white here and there so there we go let's put her out of the way I'm going to move this over for a second right let's bring her back in so we can see her properly and not amongst all this mess which I really don't like so let's bring that in so we can see. So that is her. So that's what we're going to do with her. So she's got a nice flash of purple in there. So if anybody's using um, any of the Wonder Dusts, um, that certainly works quite well from that point of view. Um, we're actually going to do her eye. Gosh, let's do that. I should make you do the eye, Kelly. Mm. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. 
You could go in it with a darker green and outline her nose and mouth. I could do. Well, I'm just doing her eye at the moment. Let's let that dry. And then we can put a little bit of white in there. I just want her to be quite sinister, I guess. Um, yeah, you could go in with the green and just do... So we did use spring green earlier, but we did, could use... Um, well, no, we used spring, but we added white to it, didn't oh. we? So we should be able to go darker again. It's It's pouring with rain outside, I know. You can hear it. I don't know where everybody is, but we are. It is absolutely pouring here. So this is the darker spring green, or spring green without any white in it. So let's go in there. We'll just, again, just use the lines that are on here. She's got a few... She's got a few witchy wrinkles, so let's get those in. And then we could just go in and enhance her hands as well. So as long as you start with green with white in it, then you've got somewhere to go with your shading. If you start with just the spring green and don't put any white in it, you can't um, shade it. It's going to be much more difficult for you. OK, so there she is. We'll leave her now to dry. We won't need to do anything further with her, but there you go. So if you are using Wonder Dusts, um, it's certainly going to work from that point of view. So we're going to switch over to the board now. Let me get the board back. So we're going to have a little turn around for a second. Just bear with me. Right. OK. But what I need to do is come back on the screen a second because it's so close. <laughs> I can't actually see what I'm doing. It's very close. So you can see everything. But now you can't see anything at all, so I can adjust my camera then before I come back on. Okay, right, let's go back and have another look, shall we? There we go. So we did this earlier, we set this all up. So we will start, um, let's start with something nice and easy. Let's start with the bats. So we are using the, um, the same method of mixing that we were doing before with the cocoa butter. I'm going to stick with brush number one at the moment. And again, to do the bats, I'm going to make them dark grey. I'm not going to make them completely black to start with. So like a dark grey colour. And then now this is what I need to worry about whether you can see. Let me turn this so my hand's not in the way. There we go. Yeah, the weather seems to have gone downhill a little bit this evening. It's absolutely pouring with rain here. Lovely. So I know we don't mind the rain, do we, Kelly? Craft. It's craft weather. Whenever there's a, a wet day, Kelly and I go, ooh, craft day. It's Lovely. It's a painting day, everybody, as well. It's a craft day. It's a craft day. That means you don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to go outside, you see. You can stay in and paint and make things. You could do some baking. Also with the bats, you could always do like their wings with the purple. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Yeah. We're going to put the black down first. And then we're going to use that purple. So the purple colour that we've got planned for the house next week, um, we're going to use it across um, everything on this board as well so that we can make sure that colour gets pulled through everywhere. So we're going to come back and do some more bits to the bats later on. So I'm using paintbrush one at the moment. I'm trying not to lean on this because this is fresh sugar paste, so I need to be careful. If you don't want to paint on fresh sugar paste, you can always... Um, do your board, stamp it all out and then leave it to dry and then come back and do it. Um, you know, you don't have to do it there and then. So I've done that in like a dark grey colour. So it's not black, OK? It's dark grey. I need to ask um, Carol to send me some silver, actually. Do you know that's the one colour I don't have? I must ask her. Now some Maureen's just mentioned it. I'll have to ask her to... Cause I've seen some of the pictures of the silver, so I must get some. <laughs> but yeah, you can use the luster colours on literally anything. Imagine the fun you're going to have with them this Christmas, doing all these Christmas paints with luster dusts. It's going to be a very blingy Christmas. But the purple is a really nice colour for Halloween, for sure. And we're going to use that lot. So again, this is just dark grey. All I've done is just paint the shape at the moment. Let's do the other bats on the other side. Let's get all the bats done. Um, when I do my painting, if I'm doing black and that's what I've got on my brush, then I'll tend to go around and do everything that's black and then I'll move on and do a different colour 
So it seems completely pointless to be cleaning your brush up in between. If that's what you've got on the go, then just get that done. And you'll see that this bit's much quicker than the witch itself. The witch took quite a bit of time because there's lots of detail there. And she's obviously quite a focus of this cake. We want her to be um, fabulous, don't we? When we come to do her. And then we'll do over here. So cocoa butter itself takes about one to two minutes to dry in between. Um, during the winter it does take a little bit longer um, in the summer it's when it's warmer so when it's warmer it does take a little bit longer to dry um, because it's warm basically and cocoa butter reacts to heat so sometimes when you're doing a paint in the summer you just have to wait a little bit longer but in the winter you can whiz through this how's that going there we go that's fine right let's put that back there so we've still got black on the moment or oh, we need to do the cat so let's do the cat while we've got the gray and the dark gray on the go so oh my god it's raining so we're going to just literally paint over the cat we don't need to make sort of too much fuss black cat if you look at a black cat tends to be everything that's black doesn't it might get a pink nose maybe but generally they are black but we're not doing black we're doing gray just remember that please this is dark gray it's not black because I can't shade it if I do it black so if I'm repeating myself it's because it's important <laughs> um I mentioned the word that I did across here spooky was a tracing that I took I basically went on to google and looked for a word a Halloween word you can pick any word you like and traced it and put it on there myself so anything it doesn't matter but I did also say that sweet stamps I think they're called sweet stamps have got sort of um, like Harry Potter um, type lettering uh, maybe Carol's got those on sugar and crumbs because that would work as well um, my sweet stamp lettering was just a little bit um, too normal for this and I, that's why I didn't use it because I thought no it's not quite right for this so there's the cat so the cat is sort of silvery color at the moment um not silvery color shiny shiny gray color it's not silver um as a shiny gray color so again we'll just leave that to dry and if you go back towards these bats over here these are dry now you see so they're dry and these are wet over here so that's the, how long it takes to kind of get from one to the other so let's get back to the cauldron and again we're going to paint that in gray while we've still got it on the go Okay, spellbound, there you go. Oh, Carol's on, or oh, Carol must be on. There you go. If anybody wants them, Carol's called them. Spellbound, or somebody from Trigger and Crumbs is on, I'm gonna guess it's Carol. Um, so this is dark gray over here. Now I'm guessing, oh, we could have put something in that cauldron, couldn't we? Kelly. What do you want to put in? Well, we could have put some green liquid into the, into the cauldron yeah i've just started painting it gray i'll leave that right i'm going to leave that out of the way because we're going to put something in the cauldron now the dead man's toes what's that that's what they say in hocus pocus when they're making the um when they're making potion, the potion they put a dead man's toes in it well, that's pleasant, isn't it? Yeah, and then they can't figure it out and they think it's a dead man's nose. If you yeah, want Carol, it's Carol who's on. It is Carol who's on. <laughs> Bones sticking out of the cauldron. You could really put anything down there. Oh. You could even do like little, like, you know, like magical, what's this called? Like smoke, steam, you know, like. Phew. Yeah, as I say, if you had the cauldron. Yeah. Is it, smoke? Is it smoke? It's not really smoke. What's it called? Can't think now. Steam? Um, no. I don't know. Magical waft? Magical waft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think magical waft is what it's called, Kelly. No, I don't. That is quite funny, though. Okay. Don't make me laugh. Uh, <laughs> right. What are you on, honestly? So we're still on dark grey, remember? Not on, I'm going, I'm avoiding the handle at the moment. I probably, I probably don't need to really, but I'm going to. You could do the handle to black. Yeah, I am going to. 
Why did I not get you to paint this? It's like a running guy. I know, tree. I'm literally thinking. Next to it, vapor. There you go. Vapor. That's that. Magical waft. Magical waft, Kelly Game. I think vapor may well be a bit more of the right. <laughs> Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm, yeah. Eyeballs. This is turning into an episode of Ghostbusters, I think, at this rate. It's funny. Oh, dear. Right. Well, this is part one of part one of two in terms of this cake so I'll come I will actually do the cake next week we're getting the board ready this week this is what we're doing okay got any more suggestions no no one else has come up with any so yeah perhaps we'll use the well, there's a green wonder dust in there somewhere I'll find that in a minute maybe we will use that as our our potion oh we could put the spring green in there and we could put that stuff over the top yeah we might do that we're, we're, we're adapting as we go. Let's put it another way. Whilst the rain is coming down outside. There we go. So we just let that dry. We don't have to completely um, make it perfect because we're going to come back and shade it. Um, that's where I went wrong. So we can ignore that bit up there. Um, now we can put this a bit darker. Oh, what brush have I got here? Brush one. So quite a small one. And then we'll just paint that handle in. We'll paint it in a bit darker later. It really doesn't matter. I've just got to remember to do it more than anything Magical else. Magical mist. Who said that? Oh, yeah. Alison, Nikki said, the trouble is we know what magical waft is. <laughs> you suggested that, Kelly. <laughs> you were like, oh, that's another That's word. funny. Like, I know, but I know, steam. I know. Magical steam. Waft. Magic magical waft. I don't think it is, Kelly, no. Um, I can't think. Oh, well, it's, it doesn't matter. We know what we're talking about, don't we? Right, let's move this over here. Oh, look, they're all getting carried away now. What you can put in it. Yeah, toxic bubbles is a good one. Right, let's bring this over. I'm going to just move the board over a tiny weeny bit. The trouble is it's the world's biggest board here, to be honest. I'm having a job to fit it all in. Let's get some brown on the go now. So we're going to do these logs at the bottom. So again, brown with white in it. Are they yeah they are logs i have to think them for a minute so they're coming out sort of a light brown color let me move that up a little bit so you can see there we go so we'll just do that to start with and then the flames under the cauldron yeah we won't mention hocus pocus the minute we start that kelly will be off won't you Kel? I, yeah, I won't sing. <laughs> she'll be singing and oh no <laughs> <laughs> love hocus pocus maybe not as many times as kelly's seen it but so sunset orange with a bit of black in it for the flames at the bottom here and then we'll darken those up with a bit of red in a minute so again just fill them in the joy of this is it's all mapped out for you we like that this is easy, relaxing painting. If anyone says to me, is this going to fit on a cupcake? I think the answer to that is no as well. This is too big. That one will. Look, that's okay. So you're all right with that. Right, let's put... There we go. Bring those down there like that. So they're quite bright at the moment, but we'll come back and we'll shade those. So we kind of leave everything to dry on that and we'll move on and we'll do the next thing. And we've got orange on our brush, so we'll add a bit of white to it. We'll brighten it up a bit and we'll go straight for the pumpkin. So this will be a much brighter orange as our base. That's super bright. And that's OK. Contrast is good. We won't bother to worry about painting over anything else. In fact, these are the easy and the quick shapes to do because you don't have to worry about not being able to see the features because we'll go back and paint those later. So you see what I mean about moving between colours? If you've got orange on your brush, do the pumpkins, do the fire, do everything that's orange, then move on to the next thing and just keep moving around. So that's our kind of first coat of pumpkin orange. Right, let's move this across. Who said that? Gold wonder dust for the flames. Yeah, why not? We'll just give it a go. I think the green's at the top of the list at the moment. Am I on camera? Yes, I am. Okay, so we'll paint this. Over here. 
you're waiting for magical love. <laughs> Who said that? You are. <laughs> should have got you doing this Kelly because you've obviously got high opinions on how this should be painted I would have let you do it but yeah but I don't I never know what time I'm going to be back yeah but also I hadn't even planned to do this today I changed my mind mid-afternoon about what we were doing so I, that's why you probably wouldn't have had any notice I would have just put it in front of you and said start painting mm. which actually works quite well anyway so there we go right so these are a little bit brighter but it doesn't matter because we're going to get darker well, I should have changed brushes actually, but I haven't. That doesn't matter. We'll just keep going. Like so. How's that coming out? Yeah, that's all right. The first layers are never that impressive. It gets better. So you can see your coverage onto like grey is quite good. So it's not having any problems there getting any sort of realistic colours. They look fine. So don't worry about overpainting anything dark. You should be fine. There we go. So again, we're going to just leave that to dry before we come back and do some more pumpkin blending. I think that's the best way to describe this, isn't it? Pumpkin, pumpkin blending. <laughs> um, and then we'll do words. Let's get the words done next because that's a fairly big bit. Um, all powder colours will work with cocoa butter. Yeah, you won't have any problems there. So you've got all the uh, matte colours and the dusting colours, these wonder dusts of Carol's. They work really well. So you're just fine. The only thing I would say is that you'll find that the luster colours, so that's the sort of golds and the purples and that, they tend to use up more powder than um, the matte colours. The matte colours you seem to be able to get more out of. Right, we're going to do this in black. I'm going to have to be ever so careful because I don't particularly want to lean on my board. So I'm just going to have to do the best I can, hopefully. So I'm going to do a dark grey, actually. I'm not going to do black. I'm going to do dark grey because that then gives me space to do some colouring. So we'll do dark grey to start with. So just follow your lines round. I tend to find it's easier to do the outline and then fill it in. I don't know why. It's sort of less daunting than doing it the other way around. Everybody see OK still? Yep. Good. So round we go. So yeah, if you have any questions about cocoa butter painting while I'm live, then do please ask because we are here to help you. If you are thinking, I don't know what that is or I've got a burning question about it, then do ask. Even if you think it sounds silly. Usually if you're if you're thinking about it, somebody else is thinking about it. So, and I know there's lots of people on here who've done my classes. So um, If you want to ask any questions about classes then do please let me know as well because if I can't tell you what they're like everybody else will so we've got two Halloween classes this year we've got classy witch which is the new one and then we've got the Halloween and Teddy which is also out that one's on offer at the moment and the classy witch is the brand new class I think we need we've got a tornado going on outside at the minute <laughs> we've got so well, I went outside to go to the toilet yeah. and I came back to rain I know we've got so much rain coming down at our unit at the moment I'm sure you can probably hear it on the um cameras I love it. sorry I love the rain I know you do it's definitely autumn now I know it's definitely autumn when Kelly. Do the clocks go back again? they don't they haven't gone back yet Forward, I don't know back, going. back into winter. Forward. So in... does that mean less time in bed? Oh, it's about time in bed. No, it's just you go like an hour forward or an hour. Well, it's going back, isn't it? So instead of it being. Oh, so instead of waking up at nine, I'm waking up at eight. No, it's going backwards, isn't it? So if I wake up at nine, I'm actually waking up at eight. Something like that, yeah. I don't I know you're looking at me. <laughs> just why ask me these questions on a live, Kelly? So if I Kelly? Go, if I wake up in the morning at nine, Kelly. <laughs> Stop it. No, I'm trying because... to concentrate on, on painting, not No, your... you don't want to answer just in case we say something stupid. Yeah, well, that wouldn't be a first, would it? Yeah, I'm sure you can hear the rain. If anybody's. Can anyone hear the rain that we've got coming down on the roof? All I need now is a power cut, and that will just about we've finish me off. Just right. It hammered down here like a monsoon. Yeah, it's going for it here at the moment, like big time. 
oh, as long as we don't lose the power, which is like the number one thing that seems to happen in this village, is our power goes down regularly, doesn't it? And it drives us all crazy. Spooky. There we go. You get an extra hour in bed, Kelly. There you go. Yay! Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> But it's not yet, Kelly. The clocks don't back, go back just yet. I think it's more end of October, isn't it? It's, near, it's usually near half term. Not that that applies to you anymore, but not yet. There we go. Where's that coming out? Okay. Spring back, fall forward. Oh, that's a good one. Someone's got another little thing there. You can hear the rain, can you? <laughs> See, I always say, what was it? What did I just say? I have no Back idea. Back into winter, forward into summer. I don't know why. You've obviously not been paying attention, Kelly. No, I am listening. I just have the brain like a goldfish. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where you get that from. <laughs> right, okay, we'll keep going here. Anyway, cocoa butter painting. What a joy it is. Um, if you haven't done it before, I do have a beginner's course. So if you're not sure what on earth I'm up to, there is a little beginner's course on my website as well. So if you want to have a go, um, it's a lovely course. Loads of people on here have done it and done really well. And kind of once you get going on that, you get hooked. I mean, that's the only thing I can't be held responsible for with painting is if you get hooked. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but it is actually quite a nice activity to do when it's raining because you don't want to go outside and sit indoors and do some painting. It's much nicer. Right, okay, spooky, going around this side. So this is still being done in the dark grey colour. Oh good, you're enjoying the painting. Oh, 31st of October, Kelly, it goes back. That's um, Halloween. Halloween. You like Halloween, didn't you? On a big scale. I am that house in the street with all the decorations up, aren't I? Yeah. Mum even used to dress up when we used to go trick-or-treating. Yeah, well, I get dressed up. Why not? I can't see why not, eh? It's an excuse to get dressed up. I have to green myself up for a live, I think, won't I? <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm making mistakes now. There we go. Right, let's get a bit more paint going here. How are we doing? Cocoa Butter Painting Course is £35 and it covers four projects. Um, and if you finish all four, you get a certificate at the end of it. Um, and lots of people on here have done it. There is a dog, a giraffe. I'm trying to find that. Kelly's going to find you a link. Don't forget it's on the school site. Um, she's going to put a link up for you so you can go and have a little look. Um, there's a little Facebook group attached to it as well, so they're all very supportive of each other. So beginners cocoa butter painting. Beginners yes. cocoa butter painting. There you go. We do beginners flowers. We do beginners cocoa butter painting. Beginners cocoa butter painting is a really good place to start actually, because then it kind of it's not overly expensive and it gives you an opportunity to decide whether it's something you're going to enjoy or not. I don't think I found anyone yet who's who's not enjoyed it. So um, what am I doing with this lettering? Um, yeah, but those little projects are just enough to get going, and this certificate at the end is a little bit of motivation in there. <laughs> Give it a go; it's a really nice thing to do. And with winter setting in, I always think September as well is one of those months where you want to try something new. I do anyway. I get quite addicted to things in early September. It's always trying to try something new. I think it's the whole kids going back to school thing, isn't it? Well, it used to be for me. That's when I used to go and sign up for adult education for everything under the sun. Flower arranging. God, I was terrible at that. Keeping them alive, mainly. Not the arranging part. I could do the arranging. I couldn't keep the flowers alive. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to join in the cocoa butter painting course, it runs all the time. It's done at your own pace. So don't, you know, there's not a start and an end date. You just sign up for it and you paint when you've got some time and then you can ask lots of questions in the little group that's attached to it and everybody's very helpful so you should do it right this is the last bit 
of the um, spooky lettering, the initial paint, and then we can start doing the shading, which is so much quicker. Thank goodness. I'm running out of, I've managed to spread my paint absolutely everywhere on this palette. I don't know what I've been doing. Right, who's bought, right, so Janet says she's bought, yeah. so Janet, what I want you to do this weekend, I want you to actually turn on the light, your tea light in the middle and get your cocoa butter going and just grab something like a patchwork cutter and just press it into the thing or if you haven't got all the bits yet, go and watch YouTube and have a look and see all the stuff I've painted or go back on Sugar and Crumbs and just pop my name in and all these different videos will come up and then you'll be able to see what you can do because there's so many possibilities and you don't have to be able to paint or draw and I think lots of people think oh I can't paint there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that um, it's actually better if you you can't paint because then you can learn it from scratch I mean lots of people haven't picked up a paintbrush since they went to school and if school was a long time ago it can seem sort of quite daunting so just give it a go but say I can't be held if you become addicted to it <laughs> if you get hooked sorry about that <laughs> yeah okay right there we go we've got all the lettering and everything painted thank goodness although I don't know what I've done there it looks like I painted it some bizarre color so let me just make that a little bit darker I think that's where I mixed up a bit more okay so we can let that all settle down now while that's drying again we move across back over this way again so you just need to keep moving around so let's go back to the cauldron and have a look at that um let's make those logs a bit darker in places so you could um so Marilyn said she did an autumnal board for cupcakes so instead of doing a cake you could just paint this for Halloween yeah you could if and you... then you could put like Anything. yeah you could put some cupcakes on it so you i did do um again i've still got it actually it's over there haven't i um i did paint oh, yeah. A, do you want me to bring it over yeah i'll have a look at that one in a minute um okay. i did do some cupcakes on a board so if you just fancy in fact it went a bit mad on sugar and crumbs um there's one lovely lady on here and i think she's maybe watching um called doe who's <laughs> who is definitely into painting um but it's lovely because it I'm pleased that you know people have been inspired to have a go and paint your boards and make them look really flash and interesting rather than just putting a cake on a silver board um, this is much more fun so I'm just adding some dark brown here and I'm using a dry brush here just to kind of soften it down a little bit just in case I'm busy chattering away and not explaining what I'm doing which is naughty um, and then we'll put some extra brown on the end there and just tap it down with the dry brush there we go so that it doesn't look flat but we'll put an extra bit of sort of dark round under the flames here a bit of shadow I guess there we go and then when we go up into the flames we'll put a little bit of red in there now dough is addicted I and um yeah, there's quite a lot of you addicted really <laughs> But it's a nice easy thing to do and you can get all this done in advance so if you've got a cake coming up hey marion's it <laughs> i've now got patchwork cutter inventor on good evening marion <laughs> i hope i'm passing the test here so i'm just going to take some red and i'm just going to put this at the bottom of these flames here like so a little extra red there doesn't matter a little bit of extra fire there We'll bring that up there so again you can kind of just move it around with your brush uh, she's there <laughs> poor doe every time she does a painting i write the word addicted <laughs> oh dear right okay so that's the flames at the bottom of that we won't need to do much more on that and we'll leave that to dry so let's go back to the cauldron itself and we're going to i'm going to up my brush to number two actually because i could do with a bit more brush and paintbrush three for my blending if I need it although I don't really know what I've got in that brush it looks like white um, so let's get some we'll go for some black with a little bit of white in it more dark than anything else for the shading now so when we look at the cauldron we're going to get sorry I've got a ton of it on there we're going to get some it's going to be darker on this side 
So I'm just going to pull that round like that. But in order to stop that staying there as a line, we take a dry brush and we'll just pull it. And we'll just kind of sweep it round the cauldron. So we pull the colour round there. Can you see what that's done there? It's made it look a bit more 3D. She's famous. <laughs> and then we'll do the same on the other side. So we'll just tap our colour down here. So we're just tapping that in. And then again, we'll just take this brush and we'll just sweep this round. How's that coming out on there? I can see it better on the camera than I can in front of me. And then we'll just put a little bit in between some of these flames. A little bit darker here. And then we can bring that up. How's that look like? Yeah, that's okay. So we're gonna have a light spot there on the cauldron. We don't want it all to be completely dark. And then you can see it's lifting it already away from those flames and giving it a bit of um, more 3D round here, isn't it? So let's make that a little bit darker still. Bring that round there like that. Can you see what it's doing? So it's lifting it up off the thing and we'll do the same here. So we'll put a little bit here just close to that handle, bring that round, same on this side, just round the top lip bit there really. How's that looking? That looks alright, doesn't it? So we don't want it to be one colour, so we always go over everything twice. Right, and then we'll just do, we'll just switch to brush one and we'll just do that handle in black and then we'll do the, the, the waft, whatever it was Kelly called it. The magical waft. The magical waft. Yeah, we'll do that. Sorry, my hand's in the way, I've just realised. I'll try and hold my brush down low so you can see. I haven't got any control over it, but that's not the point, is it? As long as you can see. <laughs> and we'll do that there. But you could always paint that silver, maybe. There we go, like that. That stands out, right, doesn't it? Okay, right, magical waft. So if we do, what have we got in green? Let's have a little look in here. Um, what's, what have I been sent? Oh, there's blue, no, hold on a minute. We're doing purple, aren't we? So if we're doing purple, what colour? Green. Magical waft, do you want green? green. This green is that colour. try that okay we're going to try I don't know if it's going to be strong enough we can try a mixture of colors how about that let's do that okay so we're going to try spring green first for the magical waft <laughs> I think everybody's um everybody's having some rain issues tonight I suspect if your Wi-Fi is freezing, it's probably the um, rain that's doing it. Okay, how are we going to do this waft then? Like bubbles, I think. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just... I didn't plan this bit, so I'm slightly scared. I'm going to get Kelly to do the magical waft. Yeah. Come on then, there you go, I'm giving you the brush. I'm now. wearing a coat because it's freezing. Well, I'm going to hold your coat up a little bit there you go are you doing it up like this it doesn't matter you just do whatever you want well i was going to do like that well you do the magical waft i'm happy i've let kelly take over for the moment well, you started up the sides that's, well, that's fine it doesn't, you sort it out for me you can always open i'm gonna make it look like bubbles okay well you do that then so we're using spring green at the moment with some white in it and then what we'll try and do is put some of this um um wonder dust over it and see what that does are you trusting me i'm trusting you yeah i'm not i can't actually see what you're doing so i'm just kind of hoping you're gonna do it okay no don't knock me i'm not touching you can you see me on camera yeah yeah we can see what you're doing just don't lean on that board i'm not leaning because it's wet sugar paste so little miss kelly's painting at the moment is that okay? That's lovely. That's a lovely magical waft. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I approve. Right. 
Um, and then what we'll do is we will put in, so the Wonder Dust Pistachio colour, is that what it's called? Yeah, Pistachio, let's try that. It is a bit paler, in fact it's quite a bit paler than the Spring Green, but it might work amongst it. So we've got, in fact I probably should have waited for this to dry maybe, but we'll just pop this over the top. Oh, it's okay actually. So this is Pistachio colour. Yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? Just highlighting it a little bit. It does come out really well on these um, on this dark colour, these luster colours. So that was spring green and then on top pistachio. There you go. That looks very nice, Kelly. I like. There we go. That is cool. Love it. Just go around, just dub it in a bit further. You can always put a little bit coming out of the cauldron down as well if you wanted to. So if you wanted a little bit sort of over the edge, if you don't like it, you can always go back and repaint it. If you wanted to put a little bit sort of hanging over the edge like that, that looks cool. But yeah, the luster dust kind of just pick it all up and just make it a little bit more interesting, I guess. There we go. Cool. We are loving this. Okay. Right, let's go back to the, we'll go back to the bats. That is a sentence, and what we'll do, we were going to do a bit purple on these, weren't we? But I'm going to just make the bodies a bit darker first. So, with the centre of the bats, you can see, um, I was going to say arms and legs, I guess it is arms and legs, isn't it? So, um, now I've got quite a small brush here, I've got paintbrush one. So, the centre of the, my hand in the way, no. So, just going to paint. paint that black and then what we'll do is we'll add some purple to the inside of the bat's wings that's going to coordinate them with the witch and also the house next week when we do the house so you're going to have to come back and see this all finished next week because I won't be finishing it tonight this is like part one of two there we go so we're doing all the painting bits and I'm just going to make him a bit darker. Is that coming out alright? Yeah, there we go. And then, I think my hand's in the way, I do apologise. Up like that. And we'll go, hold on, let's go that way as well. And then what we'll do is we'll get the... go you can see those looking a bit different on there can't you yeah there we go um let's do the other bats first before we change color so i'm just going to move that across otherwise it's going to be a bit of a nuisance to be honest um so let's do these ones here the rain's getting worse here you can really hear it now i didn't realize this was on the forecast might actually help if i'd looked at the forecast in the first place <laughs> I don't think I've got a coat with me, can I? You have to run to the car. I'll have to run, won't I, to the car? That's all right, doesn't matter. I'll you survive. Can use my coat. I'll survive. Oh, you can give the bats red dots for eyes. Well, who said that? Norma. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go scary eyes. Why not? Spooky. Spooky. We'll have to let the black dry first, though, before we do that. But yeah, we could do that. Why not? Well, we can give it a go anyway. If we don't like it, we can always just change it, can't we? It's not a problem. Right. Well, uh, while they're drying, let's do the purple wings. Should we do that? Mm -hmm. So let's go for... What brush have I got here? Zero. Okay. Let's get the old purple out. I think what you could do with these boards is say people put cupcakes and cakes and all sorts of things on them. You could tell a bit of a story with a cupcake, uh, with a cake board, which is quite nice. That was my shoe. Was it? Okay. So if you wanted to... Right, let's try this purple on here. So what I envisaged was that we would just do... Did you bring 
a few purple sections. So we'll do, which again, they're marked out, so you don't need to make these up. And hopefully this will make more sense when we build everything next week, because we're going to paint the, the roof purple next week. So we're doing like that. Yeah, I think that looks quite nice. Are you happy with that, Kenny? Yeah. Have you reached approval? Mm -hmm. Or would you like the all the wings purple? I think just a no, se sections of purple looks fine. And then we'll come back and do the red eyes in a minute. Don't let me forget. Or you could do purple eyes. Well, do you know, funny, I was just thinking that, actually. Even purple ones would be good. Um, right, let's go. And do, right, that one there. So we do every other one. We've got it all going on here, haven't we? Look at this. This is going to be a fabulous cake when it's done. Okay, and then over there. Yeah, I think Doe's just appeared again. I think Doe is making them in bulk. I think she potentially may have. Um, Watch, making bulk. These boards, oh, right. there's a lady called Doe who's been painting boards all week, Christmas mainly, all sorts of things. So she's I think she's prepared, she's ready. I know. Oh, she'd come in and do some for me, <laughs> and then I wouldn't get so far behind. Okay, there we go. Right, so that's your, your luster dust there. You can see that on there. Right, we're going to go. What should we do now? Let's go back to um, let's go back to the pumpkins. Can you use dry dust on top of cocoa butter when it's dry? Um, you can do, but I don't know why you would do that. I don't. Uh, tints and shimmers. Um, yeah. I mean, you can try it. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, yeah, give it a go. Just be careful you don't pull it all off. I think that's the only thing you've got to be careful you don't pull the paint off. But right, I'm just adding in a bit of extra cocoa butter on here. Let's move this along there. Yeah, she will be setting up stool, I reckon. <laughs> Doe's cake board shop, I think. Right, let's move that around here a second so we can just see what we're doing here. So I've just added some more cocoa butter. Sorry, let me just move this across. I've got everything under the sun here. My camera in the wrong place. There we go. Move that up. Perfect. Right, so let's do something with the pumpkin because he's looking a bit sad at the moment. He's looking a bit um, boring. So let's up. So that's the cocoa butter melting there. And we've got paintbrush number, what is this, number two. Let's make sure it's clean, which it is. So sunset orange, very nice colour. There's no orange wonder dust, no, just checking. Right, so we'll mix some of that on there so originally we had this with white in it i'm still going to put a little bit of white in um now what we'll do then is we'll start at the bottom here and we'll just bring the color up in fact what we'll do is we'll just paint over the whole thing we'll just dab it and then what we'll do trying to find a brush that's not got any paint on it that's turning out to be difficult now that's got blue on it that's not helpful <clears throat> that's got black on it oh my goodness no but oh that one's okay okay so we'll just blend that for a second i just don't want it to be a flat color but i also want it to be darker so i haven't taken this right to the edge of it yet in terms of orange right i'm sorry we're gonna have to move this out of the way again so i can get to the other pumpkin Ooh, there we go so we'll just darken this up a little bit but we're going to go further with this. Um, we just need to get a bit more colour on it. So we can paint the... Now we've kind of gone over Rosa, it. Now. She needs to hire a cleaner because she's got... She spends more time painting. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time she does anything, she blames me. It's well funny. It's so funny. I just laugh Are every time. Are you going to paint the pumpkin stalk green? Uh, are you asking me or are you telling I'm me? Telling you. Yeah, no, I probably will. But I can let that all dry anyway. Right, let's go back and do all brown. the eyes. I'd say brown. You want to do brown, okay, we'll do brown. So for this I'm using 00, so the really tiny little brush here. 
but you won't be able to get in there otherwise to do it because it's very small. So we'll get that done. Happy pumpkins. Do you ever wash your brushes? Of course, um, but I wash them at the end uh, when I've finished painting, but I'm always painting, so it... Um, they're in rotation. They're in rotation, yeah. Hot, soapy water when you've finished, but in between I don't do that, no. I just use cocoa butter to clean them up as I go. It's your trade cleaning. <laughs> All right. Then we'll come up here and do this one. Oh, I mustn't forget the cat as well. Is that cat of Zachary Binks? Zachary Binks. Well, it is if it's to do with you, Kelly, yeah. Zachary, Zachary Binks. <laughs> Someone has a little bit of an addiction to Hocus Pocus oh, I here. I love Hocus Pocus. In fact... If we just want to keep Kelly amused and we could just spend the rest of the evening talking about Hocus Pocus, you'd be very happy with that. Quote She'll quote now. the film for you. Okay. And uh, <laughs> there we are. Okay. First line of the film, I'm pretty sure, is Emily. I'm sure, Kelly, you probably know what it is. Right, we're going to leave the pumpkins to dry for the moment. Uh, we're going to have another go at the cat. So again, we'll go to black now. Remember, we did the cat grey colour. So we can do some um, shading on the cat now. Best thing to do here is do under the chin. So we'll come across here where there'll be a, a natural shadow. So we'll set that up and then we'll bring that colour through. Let's do that again. There's a hint of purple in that brush just to upset me. There we go. Is that coming out okay? Yeah, it's got a slightly tinge of... of <laughs> and then we'll just do it darker under here because that's underneath the cat. So that will make it the front legs stand out more. And then a little bit round here as well. Green eyes for the cat. You want to do green eyes for the cat? We can do green eyes. Janet says green eyes for the cat. Green eyes for the cat. We'll do that if that's what you want. And we'll just, if you just use it, the tip of the brush there, you've kind of got some lines that um, Marion's put in as well. Look for you, so you can just fill those in. That's nice and easy. And go around the outside edge of the cat as well a little bit. We're just going to make him a little bit darker. I'm sure there's purple in this somewhere. I can definitely see a hint of purple in this cat. He might have a a glow I'd say from the magic waft but the magic waft is um or magical waft is green so <laughs> that's kind of oh dear all right okay we'll bring that around here what am I doing here we go right and then in the detail there I need my zero zero brush where is that there it is for the cat's um mouth again you just put the brush in there and follow it might actually help if i had any paint on it though do make sure you have paint on it before you start there we go that's better we'll make his nose black and then we'll color eyes green yeah is that the request kenny mm -hmm. okay right let's um let's try and do some green okay well let's do the spring green because that's very lurid so let's see if we can get that in there. God knows what this is going to look like, so I do. Oh, fun. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> you can only just, that's like a <laughs> purple collar. Right, I'm lifting this up a little bit just so you can see these eyes, because it's quite funny, actually. There you go. Can you see his... <laughs> Oh dear, we'll put a little black dot in there in a minute just to try and balance that out a little bit, but that is quite funny. Okay, what was the other request? Oh yeah, red eyes on the bats, wasn't it? Right, let's go back and do and that. And the brown on the pumpkins. Yeah, well, I haven't done that bit yet, I haven't finished the pumpkins yet. Or you could do, um, yeah, do, um, I think do green You keep changing. The bats. Um, I'm just trying to keep you in the good balance. All right, so we have to do green eyes on green the bats. Green or purple, I just think if you put red in it, I mean you could put red in it. 
Do no, we'll do green. Uh, I think we do green. Let's do green. Okay, where are we going to put them? In the middle of their... On their face. Right, on their face. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make me laugh when I'm doing these things. That's not fair. And I've got black all over my hand now. So we're doing a bit of spring green. So they've definitely been at the magic waft. Right. I'm just going to have to tidy that up a bit because I've laughed while I was doing it. There we go. All right. So spring green and a very tiny paintbrush, an uber tiny paintbrush. Yeah, the, the cat hint of purple on the cat wasn't actually sort of like planned. It just kind of, yeah, I think I picked up the wrong brush, but that's OK. It doesn't matter. See, my temptation is to put a little cat bowl there and give it a name, but we mustn't do that because that's naughty. Right, well, we'd have to call it Binks or whatever that one is called in the film, wouldn't we, Kelly? Thackeray. Zachary Binks. Zachary with a T-H. Thackeray. Thackeray. Not Zachary. Right, pumpkins. Back to the pumpkins. Right, I'm just cleaning my brush up a bit. And we'll go back to Sunset Orange, but we're going to need to put some brown in it, I think, to make it a little bit darker. It's not dark enough yet. Extra orange, extra brown. Right, let's see what colour we've got now. OK, that's better. So we'll go across the bottom, where it'd be a little bit darker. And then again, we'll just pull that round. So we've got more of a darker colour going on just on the bottom and then just a little bit round the top there as well. And we'll come back and do that stalk in a second. There we go, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Right, and this way. Your cat's going to have a purple collar. Oh, we could give the cat a purple collar, I guess, couldn't we? That'd bring the cat into the theme, wouldn't it? So we'll put that down there, some of the darker orange, I'll just take another brush and just chuck that up there, oh. and then a little bit more here. This is definitely coming out better on camera than what I can see. Unfortunately, I have a light shining on me, so I have a job to see. It all looks very shiny. And then I look up and look in the camera and go, oh, yeah, that's OK. <laughs> so that's fine. OK, right. Stalk colour, Kelly. Brown. You'd like brown, so we will do brown. So get brown, put a tiny bit of white in it so it's not too dark. I might put a bit too much in there. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so stalk colour here, and we can just paint straight over this. How's that come out? That's not too dark. Let's get a bit darker. That's better. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's go across this way, back here again. Same with this one. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to the spooky lettering in a second. We'll go back there and we'll let everything dry. So we have got paintbrush one, that's perfect. That's what we want. So let's get to the black now. And then we can start doing a bit of shading on this. So we've got grey down at the moment. So we can use the black sort of round the outside edges here. Like so. And then what we can do is take hold of a dry brush, probably one that's got purple in it, know me, um, and we can just kind of blend this across so it's not, uh, we don't have a set line. But we're going to put some purple on this anyway when we get that far. Because we'll want that to tie in with the roof of the house next week, which we will definitely be painting purple. Okay. Right, let's get some more of this going. So 
so the more colour you put in the more dust kind of the thicker the paint that you're going to get for coverage we don't want this to be too um, matte and staged does that make sense we want this to look a little bit sort of shades of grey and black otherwise it's all going to look a bit um, try to think of the words this is why we didn't do it all on, on one evening because it would have been too much to then start doing the house and everything so um, this is why this project's been split in half it's a bit easier kind of once you've got all the paints out there we go and just blend that in You could actually spend quite a lot of time mucking about with this word. I've got a little bit more to do once we've got that. And then we'll put a bit darker up there. So I wonder who's tempted to have a go. Who's tempted to have a go at painting now they've seen this and think you can have a go. It Honestly, it is totally achievable. I would not sit here and do something that I knew you would not be able to replicate. It's really, it's a really nice thing to do. Down here. So we've got it's a little bit darker in some places, a little bit lighter in others. It's not just flat black. But we are painting with black at the moment over the grey just to kind of give it some areas where it's going to be a little bit darker, and then we'll go back with the purple, bring that element in as well in a second. So you'll want to come back next week and see what we've got lined up for you to finish this Halloween special. So don't forget I'm on at 6.30. I'm a little bit earlier than I think sugar and crumbs have changed to 7, haven't they? So I come on at 6.30 on Tuesdays. And we do all sorts of projects, lots of Christmas things and Halloween and all sorts of things. Sometimes painting, sometimes cakes just depends what we what we decide that afternoon <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> oh I'm not joking sometimes it is okay there we go yeah have a go see how you get on okay all right so that's as far as I'm going to go with this for the moment I'm just going to let this dry off a little bit because it's still quite wet at the moment um but what I am going to do um, is I'm going to attempt, have I got the right brush for this? Yeah, brush one. We're going to do a cobweb. I might regret this, but we'll give it a go. What, inside the O? No, we're going across here. Right, so we'll start here. I won't regret it, I'll do it properly. Is that right? And then we'll come across here. Just don't breathe when you're doing this temporarily. Hold your breath. And then we'll do one that comes down to about, I don't know. And that one could go off there a bit, couldn't it? And then another one going over here. And we'll join another one. there and then one more 
okay? Right, that's that set up. And then what we'll do is we'll go across like that. So just make your way going across it. And then again. Always a long way between that one. Extend that one out a bit. I think that's it, isn't it? Oh, we'll do one more. That's a long way over there. Why have I done that? Okay. Extend that down. There we go. Oh, I can breathe in a minute. There we go. I've got a spooky web on there. That wasn't too bad, was it? You could do one inside as well if you want to. Now what we're going to do is make the word look a bit more spooky, like it's sort of quivering. And how we're going to do that is we're going to put some lines around the outside edge of the lettering itself. So we're going to literally just take our brush and we're going to come on the inside here and down the outside. We haven't put our purple on yet, don't forget. there. And breathe every so often. And under there. And down. Now we could do a big cobweb in there if we wanted to but I think we'll just stick with a line tonight. Keep it fairly straightforward. How's that working? That looks okay. And then one here. You need a little spider hand on the phone. I knew you were going to say that. You want to do a spider? Donna says. Oh, Donna says I've got to do a spider. You don't have to. <laughs> Okay, and then under there, and under there. Okay, so that should make it look a bit more like it's sort of wobbling. And then what we'll do is we'll go and we'll put the purple in now because that should all have dried while we're doing that. So let's get the purple going. So back on the Wonder Dust Purple, Regal Purple. I don't want to keep calling it Purple Haze. Is there another one called Ask Why It's Called Purple Haze? This is Regal Purple, so don't forget. Okay, let's get some of this one. And again, we'll pop this inside here. In places, shall we? Oh, this is so nice. Look at that. Lovely. So we don't need to make this solid. We can just do it in sections like that. I hope Carol's got plenty of this purple in stock now I've mm -hmm. been going on about it. I know this happened before when I did the gold painting. I'm sure she's yeah, had, I I'm sure she's got loads in. Okay. Are we liking that idea? All right. 
Yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? And hopefully, as I say, when we put all this together next week and we do this big bit of purple on the roof of this house, it will really pick up. And you don't... Oh, she's had a delivery. There you go. All right, you've all got to go and get your purple wonder dust to do your, your spooky writing. And your magical... And your magical... <laughs> what, did, what did you call it? Magical waft. Magical waft. <laughs> that's in pistachio. In pistachio, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. There we go. How's that? That looks pretty magical, doesn't it? There we go. That's a pretty good one. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, right. I just need to put black dot in the cat's eye. Have I missed anything? No, don't put the black dot in the cat's eye. White dot? Yeah, but it's got... No. You just want it to have bright, lurid... Green eyes. Okay, all right. I won't do a dot in the eye then. I'm it's being spooky. told off by Kelly now. <laughs> right, okay. Oh, I know what I was going to do. One more thing. Um, one of the things um, that you can do to stop um your things when they're on the ground they should have a bit of a shadow going underneath them so we're just going to put a little bit of a shadow under things like the pumpkins and it makes all the difference so what you need for that is going to be like a light gray color which i'm frantically mixing up now um with cocoa butter so all you're going to do let's see how that's too dark too light we need it darker than that let's see what this comes out like that's better so you just tap a little bit of colour just underneath your pumpkin, like so, and then just take a brush and just kind of that around like that, and then it looks like it's sat on the ground. Otherwise, at this point, it looks like it's floating in midair. Okay, can you see that? And if you want to get in there a little bit darker, you can. Sometimes I then go back in and just darken up under there like so it's just so it doesn't look like it's floating in the air I don't want that okay and then same with the cat so let me just make sure I've got plenty of colour on here. So just tap, 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 tap along the bottom, under his feet, along like that, and then literally just pull it immediately. Like that. And it looks like it's sat down on the ground, which it is. And then we'll do the same on this side. And then I think we are done. We're nearly there. So we'll just pull that across. Just be careful with this bit because if you put down too much, you can make a right mess of it. So just be really, really careful how much shadow you put down, like I've just done there. Probably a bit too much there, but it doesn't matter. And then we'll put a little bit under here. join that up actually and that looks fine that looks a bit better it looks like it just belongs to that then in fact we could just take that out here a little bit like so there we go yeah, that makes a bit more sense. We will give the cat a purple collar, but I am going to stop after that because otherwise we'll be here till goodness knows what time. But I don't mind taking requests. There we go. Right. Okay. 
Um, purple collar, let's do that quickly and then we are done. And that's it until next week when we can start looking at the... Right, let's get the cord round. There you go. Okay, right, done. That's it. So that's our board ready. I think we can see it just about, can't we? All on there at the same time. Oh, look, we'll start over here with the magical waft, whatever it, Kelly called it. Um, so that's the cauldron and the pumpkin and the two bats. We put little hints of purple in everywhere. As I say, it will make more sense next week when we start putting the cake together. Um, and it hopefully should tie in with everything else. Um, let's move that across there. And then you can see the larger pumpkin, the cat and the bats. So we've used a combination of matte colours and also the luster colours. Luster colours we used were Wonder Dust Pistachio and Regal Purple. Let me get that right. And then the dusting colours we used were Sunset Orange, Black White, Spring Green, um, a little bit of red, a bit, a bit of brown. Um, and that did everything else there and don't forget as well we did the witch at the start so don't forget her so I'll bring her back in as well I'm just going to pop her there for the moment so don't forget we did the witch to start with let's bring her in but she is going to be going on the castle so that's why she's been done separately um, but we made her green as well so in fact she does match Kelly the the magical waft, waft. <laughs> So yeah, she's clearly been in there. Um, so yeah, that all ties in. So when you are putting a project together like this, just think about, obviously pumpkins are orange. There's not really too much more you can do with those, but just think about trying to get little elements of the colour in everything. And then it means that when you come to put the cake together, it's going to make more sense, um, which is what we're hoping for next week when we try and put it all together. So we've got to make sure we get a little bit of green in there. I'm sure we'll be fine, but um, that's the plan anyway. So there we are. So this video will be on YouTube. I'll put it on there. You'll also be able to watch it back on Sugar and Crumbs. Um, if you have any more questions about um, cake lessons, then there's my website coming up now, which is Tracy Man Cake School. So that's all my lessons are on there so if you are interested in having a go at doing some more painting then just log in there there's loads to choose from um all sorts of different courses on there so i'm sure there's plenty for halloween plenty of um all sorts of um different ideas on there for you right okay let's come back onto the main screen now if i just pick this up you'll get more of an idea about how big this is hold on I hate these moments because this is where I always end up dropping it. Right, okay, there we go. All right, where's that going on there? There we go. I'll hide myself behind it so you can see kind of how big it is and what we're doing here. So that's it. I'm going to just put the board away for a week. So I'm going to store it in a couple of cake lids together. Um, out of the way, we'll let that dry. And then next week we can put our cake and our haunted house on it and our witch and all these other bits and pieces. And we'll get it all painted up and looking amazing. So this is a big Halloween project. And as I say, hopefully when we finish with it, it will be fabulous. <laughs> so I will be back next Tuesday at half past six. So do join me for the um, conclusion of this particular project. Um, we will be um, putting this, uh, I say, on YouTube, but also you will be able to watch it on Sugar and Crumbs. But thank you very much for watching me. It's so nice to see everybody on a Tuesday evening. Um, so take care. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, everyone. So Kelly's still here. She hasn't fallen asleep yet. <laughs> She's just about with me. Well, I'm on the verge. She's on the verge. Uh, so take care. Have a really good week. Don't forget to tune in to Sugar and Crumbs tomorrow and Thursday. I think they've got loads going on this week, haven't they? The schedule's at the top of the Facebook page anyway. So have a little look on there and see what else that you want to come back and watch. But take care. Have a very nice evening and we'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.